All right, guys, welcome to your toxicity workshop. Uh, this is a confusing one for a lot of people because you just really don't understand what things are toxic and what things aren't. Um, so what I want you to do, just like I do with any other talk that we do, is I want you to make sure that you pick a few of the things that I talk about today that you know that you can just implement immediately. I'm all about taking immediate action. I know that that gets the, the greatest results um, that there is. So for, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Dr. Kaylee. Um, I'm with Judge Family Chiropractic here in St. Charles. And uh, we're going to go through one of our five essentials, which is um, the, usually the last one that we talk about. But we do have five, four other ones. Um, we, we talk about core chiropractic in our office. We talk about nutrition. We talk about mindset. We talk about oxygen and exercise. And we talk about minimizing toxin. The reality is, is that when it comes to minimizing toxins, all five of those essentials are sort of dabbled into along the way uh, because we've got to change our mindset. We've got to change the stuff that we're eating. We've got to be able to sweat it out. Chiropractic is going to let the body work better at detoxing. Um, so it all kind of goes into one big puzzle. Um, they are essential, so you can't just do one and not the other four. So we've got to kind of keep that mindset as well. So let's dive right in. We know that there have been found to have high lead levels in um, 2,000 water systems across the country. We know that the systems that they're using, they're actually feeding into our schools, they're feeding into our houses, our homes, um, and there's toxic levels of contaminants within those uh, water sources. And uh, we know that we're supposed to be drinking half of our body weight in ounces of water every single day. So it is important to know the type of water that you're putting into your body. One of the biggest differences between the max living model versus a toxic living lifestyle is that um, we're looking at whole food nutrients. We're looking at uh, removing toxins from around our body. Um, and then the toxic lifestyle that most people are living in is the fried food, processed foods, GMO foods, um, and then also the environmental sense and things that we have around there. We know that um, diseases are not all genetic. As much as there's a popular belief around that, we know that 80% of all cancers are attributed to environmental uh, sources. And so those factors bring in um, a, a different level. If we can change our environment around us, we can start to change the environment inside of us. And so cancer doesn't grow where it's not able to grow. But if you're, if you're creating an environment that it's suitable for, for those things, even heart disease, even diabetes, that, thing, that stuff doesn't just pop up. It's because of lifestyle choices that we've made. For the most part, um, there are some arguments that we can get into about um, some genetic things and, and go through that, that whole conversation. Um, but the majority that people are living in, um, these things are due to um, lifestyle choices. 99% uh, of cancer is due to diet and um, the accumulation of toxins. Uh, so if we've got a lot of toxins that are building up in our body, those toxins are now um, creating different cell walls, and those cell walls are now creating bigger cell walls, and cancer is just abnormal cell walls, abnormal cell tissues. And so those replicating over time are going to create a tumor. So we've got to stop that process as soon as possible. We know that 70,000 chemicals are used in the environmental um, commercially every single year. Um, 3,000 chemicals are in our food supply. 3,000 plus chemicals are in our food supply. They have been accepted by the Food and Drug Administration. Now, now swallow that pill real quick because the, the same administration that is supposed to be um, fighting for our food safety is the same one that's allowing over 3,000 chemicals to be going into our food supply. We know that 10,000 chemicals plus are used in food processing. Um, so if you're, if you're eating food out of a box or out of a processed thing, sometimes they come in containers and tubes and all the stuff. Um, those things are made with chemicals and our body was never designed to process chemicals. So we have to shift our thinking. We've got to shift from thinking that um, the FDA approves it so I can eat it. It wouldn't be on the shelf if it wasn't good for me to eat. And that's just not the case. And so we have to really start taking back the control of our health and of our toxic issues. Um, and, and also, we've got to start learning about what, what toxins actually are, what they're doing to our body, and then 
once we start learning the environmental toxins, we've also got to start having a conversation about what toxicity are you dealing with emotionally um, and what type of stuff is, is, is messing with you mentally. And so there are such things as toxic people. There are such things as toxic schedules. There are such, such things as toxic uh, world and news. There are such things as words that are toxic and thoughts that are toxic. And um, we've got to really start changing those things. So if you know, like if, if somebody's name popped into your head when I said that there's toxic people, probably something you need to start um, hitting head on. Um, also, if your work schedule or your family schedule is just all over the place, eventually that's going to lead to building stress and stress is another contri contribution to uh, building different lifestyle diseases. So stress is a, is a huge thing that we have to start, start working on. How do we do that with stress? We do that with stress by um, changing um, our morning routines, working on our war plans, working on our scheduling, making sure that we create time for personal development, making sure that we create time for um, breaks. You know, I have a, a friend who works really hard and then used to just go straight home from work and um, was having problems with, you know, the work-life balance shutting the door from work and being able to walk in and be a, a, a mom, a family person. And, um, you know, we created this space around that she, for 20, 30, 45 minutes, she goes out and does a run or does a walk by the, the river or just goes and has a coffee by herself to kind of debrief, have that space in between. And then she can go home. And she said that this is just a life changer for her to be able to go home and just be fully engaged with her family and go through that process. And so how do we minimize toxins? How do we take the responsibility to make sure that there are not toxins in our body? I've talked about this on all of my nutrition talks and, and the things that we talk about. We talk about these two layers of the um, a healthy cell, which is the double lipid bilayer. Um, when you have really good uh, fats that are being fed into your body, um, the cells are being um, uh, pre preserved. And so those toxins aren't able to get in there. If you're not putting more toxins into your body, then it's not damaging the cells that are already in your body. Versus if you have an unhealthy cell with weakening in that, that fatty tissue lining, those toxins are going to go in and get stuck in there. And the more of that you have, the more damage that's going to come up in that. And this picture just shows the difference um, that's, that's really amazing for, for us to understand good, good healthy cells versus bad healthy cells or unhealthy cells. And so to understand toxicity, we have to know, okay, so what are the top toxins that we're dealing with on a regular basis? Number one is medications. Um, people are being overprescribed things um, and the doses, even if it is for the right diagnosis, there's being more heavily uh, prescribed these medications. And so we really have to start you know, analyzing, okay, if I have a bag full of medication, if I added one more medication, is that making me healthy? Is the true picture of health for you uh, walking around with a bag full of medications or is it starting to eliminate those things and allow your body to get back to work? Um, and that's not me saying go, go get off all your medications right now. There's a process to go through to, to get your body back to healing that you'll work with your doctor and go through that process with you. Um, household products are huge. I can walk into a friend's house that has just gotten their house cleaned and I get sinus issues and, and all kinds of uh, watery eyes because of the chemicals that they're using to clean their houses with. Um, and so, or if I walk into a store or even when we were cleaning our, our adjustment bays with, with a specific product, um, it was like a, my sinuses were like, what in the world are you doing to us? Household products are huge and we're around it every single day. The type of, of pans and cookware that you use are um, adding into the toxicity issue. Heavy metals in water, um, uh, tap water, and then heavy metals, mold, and biotoxins. And then the other thing is food. So I would say that food is one of the, should be probably number one because you're eating that stuff every single day. And if you're not careful with it, it will build up over time. Uh, we know that medication is the number one cause of toxicity. There is no medication that you're taking that doesn't cause a side effect, and there's no medication that isn't made out of a chemical. And so these chemicals, yes, they do their job and they do what they're supposed to be doing. However, what they're doing is they're also putting different chemicals into your body that your body wasn't designed to process. 
And so if you're taking too many of these medications over time, that's going to build into um, uh, leading into an unhealthy relationship with your tissues. So for me, I'm 34 years old. I, I don't even know what a medicine cabinet looks like. I've never had medicine. Um, we've never, we've never really, we've never had Tylenol in our houses. We've never had the NyQuil, the DayQuil, the all the quills going on. Um, we we would get adjusted when we were sick for our feeling symptoms. Um, we never really went to the the doctor. I don't even remember having a primary doctor when I was growing up. Uh, it's not because my parents neglected us, but it's because they knew how our bodies functioned and worked. And our uncles would come over and adjust us when we weren't feeling well. We would hydrate our bodies. Um, I remember like getting sweatpants put on and sweatshirts and blankets and, and increasing that fever because we know what the fever's role is in the immune system to actually go out and fight things. And so when I'm quote unquote sick, what I do is I, first of all, I call my brother and say, hey, you need to come adjust me immediately. And um, so we do. And then I make sure that I'm drinking plenty of water. I increase my glutathione. I increase my vitamin D3, uh, increase vitamin C, increase, I, I take a, a product called colloidal silver. It's a natural antibiotic that's going to, an antibiotic antiviral. It's going to help to kill anything that's trying to function in your body. Uh, echinacea is another amazing product to have in your arsenal, in your medicine cabinet. Uh, and then cayenne extract is something that is, uh, a little bit dangerous because it's super hot. Um, basically what you do is you just drop it in the back of your throat and it kills off anything that's, that's trying to manifest and fester in the back of your throat. Um, that's something that you, if you're going to do that, do have a partner help you for the first time. Ask one of us. We can, we can show you how to get that done. Um, but those are some, some things to replace into your medicine cabinet. Um, these are things that I have on hand and are staple items for me. Another couple things is medicine uh, pain meds. I don't take pain meds. I work out hard. Um, I get sore. I have pain. I, I have the same issues as you, as you guys do. I just have different solutions. Uh, one of my favorite solutions for this is the Daily Defense. We have a product called Daily Defense in our office. It's got turmeric in it. It's got Indian gooseberry. It's got watermelon extract and um, a few other components in there as well. What that's going to do is the, um, the, the turmeric, the curcumin, is going to actually help to uh, reduce your pain levels, but there's also going to be a water uh, reduction that's going to be taken out, um, and it's going to help to decrease the inflammation, which is ultimately going to help you heal over time and not just get rid of the pain. Another product is also curcumin C3. Uh, curcumin C3 has uh, black pepper in it with it, uh, so it makes the turmeric that's in there to be even more bioavailable than without the black pepper. Um, CBD oil, I'm a, a huge fan of all things CBD. Uh, I use CBD oil every single day. Um, it helps calm me down, helps me sleep at night, helps with any achy pains that I'm, I'm dealing with because of working out or because of adjusting or something that's going on. Um, and it helps things just heal better. I take a, a good source of omegas. Um, the, the optimal omega is, is my go-to. And then I use essential oils. Essential oils are something that I've used uh, for the last probably 13, 14 years. Um, I swear by them. I think that they're great. I, I do believe that you should know how to get, get taught how to use them before you start using them just willy-nilly um, because they are powerful components inside of those essential oils. And um, you just have to know when to use what and what, what not to use. Um, they're my, I, I, like I, I, not only do I use them for my body, but I actually use the essential oils to clean my house, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, there's a lot of people that use the, the bleaches, um, the Lysol, especially now, like it has just gotten way overboard of trying to kill all these germs. Um, a sterile society is not a society that we want to live in. You do want to still come in contact with germs because germs are going to help your immune system be boosted um, rather than trying to sterilize everything and not allowing your immune system go to work. Um, one of my favorite apps that I use, it's called Think Dirty. There's a picture of it up here. Um, it's called Think Dirty. And so what that does is you, you download it onto your phone and then you can go around to all of your um, house products, cleaning products, um, beauty products, 
and you can actually scan the barcode and it's going to tell you if it's red, yellow, or green. Green is good to go, safe, all, all things, uh, nothing's wrong with this one. Yellow is like you're kind of walking the line of being toxic versus being uh, clean, but it's still kind of okay to keep that in there. And then red is absolutely get it out of your house. And so um, I would suggest to download the Think Dirty app and um, uh, start going around your house and figuring out what's, what's, what's dirty and what's not. Some of my cleaning product reformation has happened. Um, I make a lot of my own cleaning products. Um, water and vinegar works amazing to get things clean. Baking soda and hydrogen peroxide. Uh, you want to be careful with the baking soda and hydrogen peroxide though because that's like creating like a toilet bomb. Um, so it is actually very good cleaner for toilets, but you just got to be smart with it. Go on Pinterest, Google natural, organic, home remedies, um, home cleaning remedies, and there'll be all kinds of stuff that pops up that you can make on your own and get away from that. A couple of the brands that I love to clean with, um, organ uh, excuse me, Young Living is my essential oil brand that I use and have been using for the last 13 years. Um, I use their Thieves product to clean my house. They have a, a household cleaner. Um, they have a, a few different other products as well. I just use, I, I use that for my floors, I use that for my countertops, I use it for the walls, I use it for literally everything. Um, and it makes everything super shiny and, and works really, really well. Another brand that I like is Eco, E-C-O. Um, I use that for their uh, laundry soap and they have a few different other things as well. Seventh generation is good. However, I believe Clorox bought them out so they're not as good as they used to be. Uh, so just kind of be careful with those ones. I know that the Honest Company has, has stepped up its game as well. So you can always be at the store with your Think Dirty app, scan the barcode on the back and see where it's at before you even have to purchase it, which is, which is really cool. Beware of questionable marketing. A lot of these companies are um, developing products that say natural, that they say made with organic uh, substances. However, um, that doesn't mean that they're really good for you. So just make sure, I, I think if you, if you walked around with that uh, Think Dirty app, you would be able to find all the bad things and be able to make better choices when it comes to how to clean your house. Okay, personal care products. As women, we use around 10 to 12 different personal products um, in our house on a daily basis. We know that perfumes have 250 to 400 different chemical constituents inside of those. Lipstick has 300, or uh, excuse me, 33 components. Body lotion is 32. There's like 168 different chemicals that you're putting on your body on a daily basis. Your skin is your largest organ. It's also the most absorbable. And so you want to be very, very wise on what you're putting on and not just in your body. And so you've, we, we've got to start shifting towards some things. Couple brands that I like for skincare. Uh, for shampoo and conditioner, this is a tough one uh, because it, if you don't find the right one for your hair, it's gonna leave like a weird texture on there that you're not used to uh, with using the toxic shampoos. Um, I found that Intelligent Nutrients, which is actually a brand that we carry, uh, we can special order it for you. We don't carry it on the shelves. Um, but I use their shampoo and I use their conditioner. I use their face lotions and their oils uh, for your face and the serums. Um, Dr. Bronner's Castile Soap, that's a soap that I use on a daily basis, that's my body wash, um, my hand soap, and um, you can get it in all kinds of different uh, flavors, scents. Um, Aletheia is another brand that I use for body lotion. I also just straight up use coconut oil for body lotion as well, but sometimes I need a little bit more moisturizer, um, so I use the brand called Aletheia. Um, I, you can find that on uh, either Amazon, I go to Fruitful Yield here in town, and I buy it right from there. Uh, makeup is huge because it's on us all day long. I actually have a friend who works for a makeup company and um, it's full of toxins and I've known that it's full of toxins for a long time. And now um, she's developing some skin cancers and blaming it on the fact that she's not wearing sunscreen when the reality is, is that she's putting a lot of chemicals on her skin on a daily basis. 
Um, so we got to be really very careful with what we're putting onto our body. I'm not saying sunscreen's bad, but you do need to, to have the right kind because most mainstream sunscreens are going to be filled with toxic chemicals. I like the brand Badger. I like Kiss My Face, and there's another one that I like, and I can't think of it. It's like um, Goddess, Garden Goddess, I believe it is. It's green. Um, that's a good uh, sunscreen brand. Um, as far as makeup goes, Eco Bella has been one of the best ones that I have found uh, for foundation. Alamia is a good eyeliner, and the Eco Bella um, mascara is also really good. So those are some. I don't use a lot of makeup, so you can kind of go and do the research yourself. Um, but there are some some of the um, brands that I like to use for those. Um, dental hygiene. It's important for you to brush your teeth. We want to stay away from the fluoride, so you want to get fluoride free. A couple of my favorite brands are Magic Mud. Um, it is a charcoal based um, paste, and you have to be so super careful with this because it, like, you brush your teeth and your mouth is going to turn black, and then as you spit it out, like, your sink is going to turn black, so you have to be very careful with. Um, how you're doing that so it doesn't splatter onto your nice white shirt. Um, I also use Young Living. Young Living is another very good toothpaste, has a good toothpaste. Spry, S-P-R-Y, is another great brand. They've got gum, they've got toothpaste, but it's fluoride free and it's made with um, xylitol, I believe. And then Himalaya Botique, Botanic uh, is another toothpaste that I love. That's probably my favorite one. But I'll rotate between those four or five different companies and brands um, each tube. I'll, I'll go for something a little bit different. Um, pots and pans. This is huge because you're cooking your food in this stuff all the time. So we want you to make sure that you're, you're, you're using the right types of things. So here's what not to cook in. I'm going to start from the bottom up because then I'm going to talk about something else. Um, we want to we not cook in tin foil because the, um, the foil leaches the aluminum. We don't want to cook in Teflon or non-stick pans. Um, there's a, an amazing uh, documentary, I can't think of the name of it uh, right now, but there's, it's all on Teflon and how bad that is for your health. Um, and then plastic Tupperwares are another one that you don't want to be cooking in. And then microwaves, which is a huge controversy. Um, but I haven't used a microwave in about 15 years. Cool thing is, is I still get to eat hot food. Um, we just don't use microwaves. We use stoves and ovens and, and toaster ovens and things to make things hot. Uh, it just takes a little bit longer, but it's, it's better for you. Um, microwaves create free radicals and byproducts that deplete minerals and nutrients from your food. They've also, when they're plugged in and you're using them, they have a high level of radiation. And so that radiation can even be felt through walls. All right, so now that I told you what not to cook in, now let's figure out what we're supposed to be cooking in. Um, stainless steel is my go-to because there's nothing wrong with it. There's no questions about it. Um, it is harder to cook with, um, and all the things get stuck on there a lot easier. So you got to be very careful. Um, I just have a, a scratchy pad that I make sure that I have on hand all the time. The, the like um, stainless steel scratchy pads helps me clean that off. Cast iron is amazing, but you've got to go with like the old school cast iron that you can find at a, gar uh, a garage sale or even from your grandma and grandpa. Uh, because right now they're, they're making a lot of cast iron. It's making a comeback, but they're lining it with Teflon and the nonstick stuff, uh, which is kind of taking away the benefit of the cast iron itself. Use an oven, use a stove. I use a food dehydrator a lot. Uh, because I do eat a, a, a mostly raw diet, so I am using the dehydrator to, to make different things. Crock pot, instant pot, toaster oven. I believe they even have a toaster oven that is an air fryer as well. I don't know anything about that, but I think um, it's in the safe category when it comes to that. Make sure that when you're storing your food, you do not store in plastic. I just talked about this a minute ago, um, but make sure you're storing it in glass containers. Um, you can go to places like Costco that will have um, big places, big um, packages of glass containers that you can get to uh, store your food in them. Okay, so here is the conversation on water. I think that this is a topic that, uh, first of all, everybody should be drinking water. Yes, we agree on that, but we want to make sure that you're drinking quality water. 
And so we know that there are 250 million pounds of active pharmaceuticals that are being flushed down the toilet on a daily basis, either through urine and feces or just being dumped into our water stream in general. Um, when you're getting city water, it's taking out big um, chunks of that stuff, but then they're adding in chlorine, they're adding in fluoride, they're adding in all kinds of chemical constituents to clean the water even more, um, but it's not getting rid of heavy metals and it's not getting rid of things that are um, damaging to your health. Okay, so where are you getting most of your water from? Um, the reality is, is that you expose yourself to 25 gallons of water every single time you take a shower. It's even worse when you're taking a bath because you're just laying in it. Um, and so what does that mean? What is that doing to your body? As you're exposing yourself for these, um, these chemicals are being absorbed into your skin. They're being absorbed into your body and they're going into your cells. And so you may think that you're living a healthy lifestyle, but if you don't have a filter on your, your water, um, either drinking water or even the tap water that you're using to take a shower, that's something that can be changed. Um, I, when I started this journey, I had a shower filter that you can put right into the, the shower head. Um, it's about $45, $50, lasts for a year, and then you change the filter on a yearly basis. Uh, that's going to clean out a bunch of more of the uh, toxic heavy metals that are coming out. Uh, and then I also had an above-the-counter water filtration system. It had like 11 different layers, and uh, we use that to uh, filter our drinking water as well. Uh, since then, I've moved into my house. I have a whole water, uh, whole house water system that's cleaning out all of the water. It's also a water softener. Um, so the water that I'm taking a shower with, I know is being um, filtered out through that system. And then I have another system for my drinking water that, that filters it even more and then um, adds in some UV lights and some other things that it does for that. So where do you start if you're trying to find solutions for water. The easiest and the quickest would be uh, Berkeley countertop filters are amazing. You can find them on Amazon, you can find them on their website. Um, it's just this big tin um, container that you fill water in and it, it helps to filter out the bad stuff. Um, what I started with was a company called New Wave. Uh, that's what I used the uh, shower filter and the above counter drinking filter as well. They even have like a like one of those like Brita in, in the fridge filters as well. But that's New Wave, it's a great one. Um, I, my, my whole house water filter is from HAG, H-A-G-U-E. Uh, that's another great system as well. Uh, you wanna stay away from bottled water as much as possible. First of all, it's completely overpriced and it's usually just tap water put into a water bottle. If you're on the road and you have to stop and get something, make sure you're getting natural spring water not the distilled and not the purified water. Um, just go for the, the natural spring water if you're having to get bottled water. Um, One of the other things that I want to talk to you guys about is amalgam fillings, the silver stuff that's in your teeth. Um, that is rich with um, mercury. Problem is with that, there's a video that you can Google and they take an eraser and make the amalgam fillings hot and you can see the mercury getting leached out of that. So anytime you eat hot food, drink coffee, hot coffee, hot tea, hot drinks, or, or even like if you're grinding your teeth, that's starting to leach uh, mercury into your brain, into your mouth, and so um, that's affecting your people with Alzheimer's, uh, brain fog, and things like that. So I recommend finding a natural, holistic dentist to help um, remove those amalgam fillings and put the porcelain fillings in there instead, the white fillings. Um, I, I, I've just seen so many people have great success stories after getting their amalgams removed. There is an entire process that you need to go through, so make sure that you're getting the proper dentist to help you out with that. Um, there's a thing called xenoestrogens. Um, what these are are estrogen mimickers, and so what those are doing is they are um, basically like BPA and different uh, chemicals that are being put into your body because of the food sources that you're eating or different environmental toxins, and they are disrupting your hormonal system. 
They're pretending to be estrogen, um, which is a bad thing for males and it's a bad thing for females. And so this is something that we want to start regulating at a higher level. Um, but in order to do that, we've got to go back into the pots and the pans, the, the, the uh, household cleaners, and the food intake that you're having as well. That's why it's also so important to make sure that you're eating a, an organic diet. We know that there are 3 million, 3 million tons of pesticides uh, used worldwide every single year. 3 million tons. That is like an insane number. All that stuff is getting sprayed onto your chemical, your foods, and then you're, you're eating that if you're not eating an organic um, diet. So your body is designed to remove toxins. There's a, a few different pathways that it takes to get these toxins to get out of your system. Um, number one, it, it, it's, it gets the toxins, they're fat soluble, and they go into your body and they get stuck in the fat cells. Um, they, your, your cells need vitamin B, they need folic acid, they need glutathione, they need good antioxidants, they need vitamin C, vitamin E <clears throat> to help get these toxic um, sources out of the cell, good omegas, and then once that all happens, it goes through your liver and through your gallbladder and takes the toxins out of your system. And so there's an entire detoxification system that your body has been designed to use. But the problem is, is that so many people's detox system isn't working properly, which is where um, a couple things come into play. Um, working out and exercising is huge for getting the toxins out of your body. Um, but most importantly is chiropractic care because we want to make sure that the communication from your brain is getting to your liver, it's getting to your gallbladder, it's getting to the systems where we're starting to um, detox these, um, these uh, toxins from. We know that detoxing starts from above down and goes inside out and that's just how your body works. Number one rule to start with is eat real food. Just get away from eating processed foods and you'll, you'll, you'll be at a start right there. Um, once you get that underway, look for the, the Dirty Dozen uh, list, the D Dirty Dozen Clean 15. Start buying things in an organic fashion and watch how your body responds in those ways. Change the type of oils that you're eating. Use coconut oil to cook with. Use olive oil to drizzle on your foods. Eat really good raw nuts and seeds. Eat really good um, avocados because these, these good fats are going to help you detox um, through this process. Change the type of meats that you're eating. I will say this in probably every talk that I do is change the meat that you're eating. Get rid of the toxins that are going into the meat and then you'll get rid of the toxins that are going out of your body. Fitness is huge. We, we, have, we know that our body's number one detoxing system is sweat. And so every time you can get your body to sweat, you're releasing toxins from your body. And so that should be something that you do for at least 15 to 30 minutes a day, if longer if you need to. Understand that sweating is a good thing. Um, also, your sm if your sweat like stinks really bad, if you get the BO, um, high levels of the BO, that means that you're living in a toxic lifestyle, toxic state. Um, and so you have to go through a whole detox process to get those toxins out. I'm, I'm all for sweating. Um, there's going to be some times where that sweat smells bad, um, but that shouldn't be on a normal daily basis. So uh, if you have BO, if you've got issues, it's time for you to go on a detox. It's time for you to, to do a 15-day reset and start going through that process with that. Um, short surges of energy are best. These high-intensity interval trainings are going to be amazing for increasing your um, uh, sweat, sweatiness, sweatiness and allowing your body to go back and do what it's supposed to do with that. Uh, we do have actually a challenge for you guys. If you, if you text the word de detox to 33777, there's a detox challenge that's going to be sent to you um, that will, uh, you'll be able to follow exactly what to do, supplements to take, the food to be eating, the workouts to be doing to make sure that you get your body healing. If you are in need of getting the, the toxic, toxins out of your body, if you want to just live a toxic-free lifestyle, it starts with breakfast. Um, I recommend doing a, a breakfast shake in the morning, uh, doing your greens with your protein <clears throat> with a, about two cups of almond milk, 
and drinking that down is going to help with your detoxification process. Making sure you're taking your cell detox and your body detox every single day. Uh, vitamin D and B complex are also going to help you to detox your body. And then even starting with your kids, um, going through a detox process with them. A um, couple things, if you're in our office and you're watching this and you want to go get some of these products that are up on the screen or even other things, if you have any questions, you can ask anybody on our team that will help you out. Let them know, uh, give them the code DETOX and let them know that you are on this toxicity workshop and uh, you're going to receive 20% off in our office. If you're watching this and you're not from um, St. Charles area, you can't come into our office, you can still go in on our website and get product. Um, I just don't have a discount code for you, uh, but you will be able to get the product and get it sent to your house um, within the next couple of days. So, and then that's all I have. Go out and live a toxic free lifestyle. Thanks for watching.